Off the shores of our lakes, rivers, and oceans, sometimes just meters below the surface, are worlds that in many cases have never been seen by human eyes before. I love building tools to explore. That's something I'm really passionate about. And about three years ago, I co-founded a company to build telerobotic exploration tools. These ROV submarines, remotely operated vehicles, are telerobots that allow us to see parts of the world that have never been seen before. The general concept of telerobotics is that with a data connection to a robot, you can see what the robot sees, and you can make the robot do what you want it to do. It's a way of being in a place that you can't physically be at yourself. And our robot works in the same way. It has a camera on board, and it sends live video up to the surface. And so you can plug it into your laptop computer, and you can drive it around. You literally hold a gamepad controller, just like playing a video game, to, to fly it. And it really is a lot like playing a video game, except for one big difference which is that, unlike video games, the things you see with a telerobot are real. And underwater uh, is an incredible place to explore. The things that you see down there are often things that would not even be imaginable by a video game programmer. This stuff is innately interesting. Obviously, there's a scientific purpose to researching all of it. But the whole reason that we explore, the whole reason we're doing this research in the first place, is because I believe that curiosity is an innate human trait. It's something that we all want to do, whether or not there's a scientific justification for it. The ability to look around and, and understand this world that we live in is extremely important. Curiosity is the thing that transforms a toddler's understanding of the world into that of an adult. And even as we become adults, we end up using curiosity as the way to kind of explore the ever-growing complexity of, of the world that we live in. The way I like to think of it is that it's a four-part process. Curiosity leads to exploration, exploration leads to knowledge, and knowledge leads to understanding. So why is it so important that we understand all this stuff? We're living in a world now where with media and you know, Facebook and our friends and politicians, there's so much subjective noise about what's going on, it's really hard to make sense for it. I think that in order to really understand the world, if we want to really understand it, not just know, but understand this place that we're living in. We have to have the tools to explore and pursue understanding on our own. Um, so this is, this is the way that we do this. We, we find things to ask questions about, and then we research them on our own. OpenROV, the company that we started, uh, stands for Open Source Remotely Operated Vehicle, um, is a company intended to make exploration accessible to everyone. We've now come up with this kit that's really low cost. Um, it's under $1,000, and we've shipped more than 1,500 of them around the world. And although it's a good business, and, and you know, that's a great thing, we get to kind of build this thing that we care about, the greatest part of it is getting footage back from people of the things that they've explored. And I wanted to share a little bit of that with you today. This is one of my favorite clips. Uh, this footage is from Vancouver, Canada. It's off the coast, and uh, it's in about 100 meters of water. The little um, features that you're seeing that the robot is flying around are glass sponges. And this is an entire reef of glass sponges, something that we thought only existed in the Jurassic period. We thought that these were extinct until the uh, early 2000s. But now Darcy Pullen, a, a member of our community, was able to build this robot in his garage using our plans and see something that most people would never be able to see. If we have eyes everywhere around the world, how can that change the way that we explore? What, is, what does exploration look like when we, we have that tool in all of our hands? And you see these little shrimp things swimming in front of the camera, kind of blocking the, the view. These copepods are attracted to light, kind of like moths. And um, so even when you're looking at an interesting feature, you get to see the context. This is footage of a sunken sailboat in Lake Tahoe on the California-Nevada border. And this sailboat uh, we discovered, I was actually flying at the time, was in about 20 meters of water. Everyone said, don't go into the sailboat, you'll get stuck. I said, don't worry, I will not go into the sailboat. And then we got really close to the hatch, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go into the sailboat. I'm just going to check this out. <laughs> but then we did, and we saw this amazing thing. There's fish inside of it, and there's a, a coffee can laying on the bottom. I know everything about this sailboat, and I've never seen it with my own eyes. 
And, and the robots have been used to explore really amazing places. This is a cave in the Yucatan Peninsula. It's called the Cenote. It's a water-filled cave. And uh, open ROV pilot Colin Ho was up on the surface. It was pouring down rain, and he was piloting this robot alongside these professional cave divers. And one of the divers pointed something out. He said, hey, look at this. He's motioning to the ROV to go look at it. So he maneuvers around, and he looks at what the diver's pointing to. And uh, what he was pointing at was ancient Mayan pottery. This pottery had been in this cave probably for centuries, and he was able to get a glimpse of it with this ROV. He's not even a scuba diver, and he was able to take a look at this. But you don't always have to be in amazing places to see amazing things. This is footage from Sweden. Uh, a guy in our community named Joachim Carson built his ROV and put it just in the middle of this river going through the, the center of his city. And immediately he started seeing glass bottles and, and you know, cable ties and, and um, all sorts of trash and debris. Even this bicycle just sitting in, in, in just a few meters of water. You know, it's so easy to think that when you throw something in the water, when it ends up in the water, it just vanishes. But this stuff is all there. If we really want to understand what we're doing to our world, we have to be able to see it with our own eyes. And just a textbook or a news, newspaper thing isn't going to do it. We have to be able to viscerally understand what it is that's going on down there. Um, and this, I think, is my favorite footage. Uh, this is a night dive off of a sailboat in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And we were following the anchor chain of this sailboat down, and we started seeing these little white dots everywhere. What are these things? So we started to pull the ROA, ROV back from the, uh, from the anchor chain, and we noticed these are those same things like in the first video. These copepods, these little shrimp, are attracted to the light of the ROV. And when I say attracted to the light of the ROV, I mean like really attracted to the light of the ROV. I mean like really, really attracted to the light of the ROV. And, and there became so many of them, we, di we didn't even know where we were going. We had to kind of outrun them constantly to, to get an idea of what was down there. But once we started doing that, uh, what we saw was amazing. If you look off to the right, you can see just this little white thing. It'll get closer soon. Um, that's a puffer fish. You're going to see he's going to come right up. And, and he just came, he did. He, he swam right up to the vehicle. And then right below him is a skate. If you're a scuba diver, you know you don't normally get this view. This robot, this surrogate you know, existence of, of, of you know, a presence has allowed us to see a world not only in a different place than we'd be able to go, but in a different way than we'd normally be able to see it. It was extremely interesting, and I have a hypothesis that the reason these fish got so close to the vehicle is because it is far too small and cute to be intimidating to fish. <laughs> so, telerobots are not a new concept. Most of us have been amazed by the images sent back from Mars rovers, you know, beaming back these images of a distant planet. And in more recent times, we've become familiar with drones, you know, quadcopters that have first-person uh, view cameras that, you know, send those images back to Earth. Um, these are all versions of telerobots that are, are in our existence today, but, but I think this is just the beginning. I like to picture a world where hundreds of thousands of people have access to these kind of tools for exploration. What happens if you put this kind of ability to explore the world in the hands of everybody? I believe that telerobotics holds huge potential as a tool for exploration, not just because of where the technology can take us, but who it can take with it. Picture a classroom. Picture a classroom where a whole bunch of students are learning about the ocean. And instead of just opening a textbook, what if they could log into an ROV in some other part of the world and fly it around? You know, they, they could go look at a fish or they could go look at a rock feature. Better yet, picture that the vehicle has cameras looking in every direction and using virtual reality goggles. Everyone in the class could be looking in different directions. And if student A says, hey, look, look what's that over there? All the other students could you know, look over. And, and the teacher, let's call, her, uh, let's call her Miss Frizzle, could fly the ROV over to take a better look. This is, this is my version of the magic school bus. Or, or picture mission control at NASA. You know, we're, all, we're all familiar with this image of, of you know, all these different specialists, an engineer and a, a payload specialist and a, you know, all these communication people all working together in one room, each watching their own specific thing. But now imagine if you could be diving on a shipwreck and you could have a marine archaeologist and you could have a biologist and you could have a, an ROV pilot, but they don't all have to be in one room. With an internet connection, we could be all around the world. Everyone could participate. We are entering a world of participatory exploration. This is the age of... of exploration that is guided by our connectivity. And it's an amazing period because, you know, it no longer takes a research grant to do exploration. You don't have to be the elite and well-funded. I think that curiosity is kind of this thing that bridges the gap between science and emotion. We're curious innately. It's part of who we are. And perhaps for the first time in human existence, this curiosity that we have, this exploration of the world that we want to do, well, it can all be done together. And that's the future. So with that, thank you very much.